Hello everyone, my name is Loco and welcome to another StarCraft 2 Legacy of the Void tutorial. Today I want to be giving you a build order of Solar's Zerg vs Terran. I'm going to be talking about the strengths, I'm going to be talking about the weaknesses, the build order itself, the deviations that Solar makes while he's actually playing, and we're going to look at an in-depth strategy that you can try and execute in your own games as well. Now I'm not just going to focus on Zerg vs Terran, I also plan on actually making videos in the future for both Protoss and Terran as well as the other Zerg matchups, so if you're interested in and checking any of those out, make sure you hit that subscribe button down below so you get a notification as soon as I upload them. But either way, the very first premier tournament of Legacy of the Void has finally happened and Solar ended up taking Dreamhack Winter 2015. Now, Solar currently is widely regarded as the very best player in Legacy of the Void. I wouldn't be surprised if he gets overtaken at some point by some of the, you know, I suppose more well-known Zerg players, although he's always been one of the very best Zerg players all around. And we're gonna be watching a specific game right here that he played for the Semper literally just a couple of days ago. Now, he is widely regarded as having some of the best Zerg vs. Terran in Legacy right now for the simple fact that he is playing something a little different than most of the Zerg players are playing. He focuses a lot on Roaches and Ravagers, and he has different variations of this build. Now, what I'm gonna be trying to teach you in this game as well, or in this video rather, is the three base Zerg vs. Terran build that he focuses on um, Roaches and Ravagers. He also does build orders uh, with Mutalisks and Zerglings and Banelings and all that sort of shenanigans. However, I'm not gonna try and, you know, give you an in-depth guide on that. Obviously, that's pretty similar to what Heart of the Swarm was possible as well, but the Ravagers really do change up, especially the mid-game of this one. Now, as far as variations go that Solar makes, he actually has a ton of them. I've been watching, I think in total, about 12 replays of him executing this build order in ZVT, and he has a ton of variations of them. The one we're looking at today, for the most part, is the most macro-focused one, and he does something very similar in literally every single time that he gets up to three bases. Now, as far as variations go, or deviations that you may see him play, he has, for example, an option where he um, goes for Roaches and Ravagers off of two bases, but then he obviously actually um, skips out the Zerking speed, starts pumping Roaches early, and does a lot of damage, and he seems to be doing that mostly on maps such as Arena that have a very short rush distance. The same actually goes for other variations, for example, the second one that we see quite a lot from him is also off of two bases, but then he focuses on a lot of Ravagers and a lot of Zerklings, so that seems to be mostly uh, because obviously the Roaches are not going to be upgraded at that point and you know he's doesn't he doesn't have any of the plus one plus one upgrades and he doesn't have roach speed and all that shenanigans so he focuses a lot on ravages and zerklings now i'm just telling you this because if you may be watching any of the solar games you may see one of those variations come into play and obviously he also focuses on mutaling bane like i already mentioned now what we're focusing on today in this video is the most standard zerk versus terran macro focus build order that solar seems to be going for when he manages to get off of three bases and this is likely going to be the one that is going to be most popular in the future, especially once the map pool settle down or settles down a little bit, because currently there's a lot of cheesy maps out there, and I honestly don't think those are going to be sticking around for too long. So, on macro focus map, on relatively big maps, this is the build order that Solar focuses on the most. Now, since there are so many variations that Solar goes for, I'm gonna try and give you sort of a guideline, because even if he plays the exact same build order, he is still making deviations with the amount of Zerklings that he makes, and that is mostly due to the scouting information that he gets. Throughout the entire game, Solar is constantly scouting around with Zerklings and Overlords, and I'm not gonna be focusing on that in this specific video. I'm just simply gonna give you some guidelines to go ahead and try and execute this build order yourself. So first off, what are we gonna focus on? In this specific game, we're gonna focus on a 3-base timing attack with Roaches and Ravagers, and then having plus one, plus one upgrades on those Roaches and Ravagers, and then follow it up with a Roach Speed timing attack. So we want to try, and please note this down if you're going to be practicing this in a custom game, we're going to try and be maxed out in supply, so with Roaches and Ravagers and plus one, plus one, and Roach Speed at eight and a half minutes in game time. And that is obviously while staying safe in the early game. So when you're practicing this, and I would highly recommend you go ahead and do so, Try and focus on hitting a maxed out supply, so 200-200 Roaches and Ravagers um, at the 8 minute and 30 seconds mark. Now, in general, this build order will focus on getting as many workers as possible without dying. Okay, so let me repeat that, this is very important. You want to try and focus on getting as many workers only on, or early on in the game, as you possibly can without dying. 
So you will need to scout about and see what's going on. You will need to start making a couple of units if you see that the Terran player is playing very aggressive. But the general mindset should be to actually focus on making as many drones as possible early on uh, before going ahead and making army. Because when you think about it, the longer a worker is mining, I mean, even if it's mining for another 30 seconds or so, it will bring in about an additional 20 minerals. As far as strengths and weaknesses of the build order go, we should be looking at a maxed out army, like I mentioned, at 8 minutes and 30 seconds, so we max out very quickly and we have a very powerful timing attack. However, besides that strength, obviously, we also have the weakness in the fact that we're focusing on roaches and ravagers. And that immediately in Zerg vs Terran means that you're gonna be a lot more susceptible to drops, for example. Drops are much easier to defend by playing Mutaling Bane, and you're gonna have to make sure that you split up the army accordingly to what the Terran player is doing. Besides that, another strength that the build order does have is that you have a lot of different transition options although if you are anywhere below like master league i can imagine that if you execute this correctly there's absolutely no way that you're gonna end up losing the matches at all if you manage to actually hit with 200 200 at 8 minutes and 30 seconds anyways if you're more of the guy that actually prefers reading the build order check the link down below right below the like button in the description of this video i made a nice write-up of this thing as well uh, so if you want to put it on a second monitor while practicing you can go ahead and do so so Solar starts off the build order very normal with an Overlord at 13 supply and he then follows it up with a hatchery on the low ground right here with 17 supply. Then he makes two more workers and he goes ahead and makes an 18 gas geyser, so the Vespian gas geyser right there. And he makes one more drone and eventually he puts down the spawning pool right there as well. So, so far we got the 17 hatchery, 18 gas geyser, 18 spawning pool. And obviously the idea behind this is that we get the early zerking speed going. So the only thing we're gonna make out of the extractor is actually get 100 gas early on, start up the metabolic boost upgrade in the spawning pool so we can get some zerking for safety, all the while we're making as many drones as possible. So as soon as the spawning pool finishes and Solar mines 100 Vespian gas, he actually decides to pull two drones out of the gas geyser and goes full on into double queen production right there. He makes a couple of safety zerkings to deal with early game reapers in particular and then he goes ahead and makes more and more and more drones so for that very reason you gotta make sure you pull the drones out of the gas geyser at least for a little while at this point the only thing solo adds on is a third queen he injects with the first one once and then actually puts down a creep tumor that he uses to connect the two bases now this queen right here is going to be dedicated to spreading creep right now and the queen in the natural is actually going to be focused on injecting so in total we're going to have three queens early on all the while making non-stop workers now in this specific game as you can see he's producing a couple more uh, zerklings he wouldn't be doing that if it wasn't for the fact that he scouted a bunch of extra reapers and obviously at the same time he is constantly moving out the these overlords right here as well to figure out exactly what is going on so in this specific game he scouts more barracks you may end up scouting something differently but if you don't scout anything at all you should probably stick around on a maximum of 10 zerklings once Solar makes enough workers to actually saturate the natural, so right now as you can see a couple of them are still in the production tab, he immediately queues up the third base and he does that in every single one of them, not only if there's a gold base right there. So once you hit full saturation in the natural as well as in the main, while still not mining gas by the way, go for the third hatchery. Right after putting down the third hatchery, he also puts down the Roach Warren and very shortly he will actually be putting the drones back into the gas geyser right there in the main base and he then also goes ahead and starts two more extractors. So basically after hitting full saturation, he goes for the third base, he then puts down a Roach Warren as the drones back in the gas in the main and then puts two more gas geysers down. At this point, since he doesn't really have to make any more workers since the third base is still building, he also adds on a lot of zerklings. And in most games, he seems to go up to anywhere between 16 to 20 zerklings. So if you are, you know, not scouting as heavily as he does, make sure to go ahead and get at least 20 zerklings and then follow it up with more and more workers. So make sure you start more workers, not just to actually, you know, saturate the natural, but also to actually move a bunch of workers from the natural immediately to the third base once it finishes up. The next interesting interesting thing happens right as the roach warren finishes up. He ends up making a right around three or four roaches and he can potentially morph those into ravagers if for example the opponent is going for some liberator play and he then follows it up with a lair as well. So once the roach warren finishes he starts a couple of safety roaches as well as a lair. So right when the lair is right about a third to halfway done he puts down double evolution chambers. Now the reason for that is so that he can start up the double upgrades right around the same time as the lair finishes and that way he can also start the glyoric 
constitution upgrade for the Roach Warren. So start the evolution chambers, the double evo chambers, when the lair is about a third to halfway done. Now keep in mind, while this is going on, and while he made a couple of Roaches for defense, he's really only been focusing on making drones for the third base. Currently, there's four gas geysers down, but as soon as the max saturation is hit, he will start focusing on the fifth and the sixth gas geysers right there as well. In some games, he actually delays the fourth as well right there, um, and he gets those at the same time as the fifth and the sixth one. Right when the lair finishes, the evo chamber should be done as well, and you want to be starting up the plus one missile upgrade, as well as the plus one carapace, as well as the glio reconstitution upgrade. Now, as soon as he hits max saturation, and as you can see, there's only a couple more workers that he needs right here in the natural that just now finished up um, he's got to make sure that he's got the fifth and the sixth gas guys just mining like i already mentioned and at that point he starts full on roach production so after saturating three bases and after starting up the three upgrades right here we're waiting for those upgrades to finish in the meantime since we got six gas garages going we can focus on heavy heavy roach and ravager play so while you're waiting for the upgrades to finish up make sure that you start non-stop roach and ravager production now in this specific game you can see that Semper, the Terran player, is actually being very annoying with some drops and this is the reason why you want to split up your army. As you can see there's also a bunch of Reapers pushing in and very shortly there will also be a drop in the main base. You need to make sure that since you're playing a relatively, um, you know, slow army, that you're splitting up your forces constantly and that you're positioning your queens well so that you can actually spot incoming units very early on. On top of that the creep threat is crucial to make sure that you can actually defend the early game aggression as well. Right at 8 minutes and 30 seconds, or whenever the plus 1 plus 1 and road speed upgrades are done, you will see that Solar starts moving across the map. And at this point, especially like I mentioned in the lower league, this should be simply a death push. You want to try and focus on landing the corrosive bio, the ability right here of the Ravagers, either to zone out the Terran units or to simply kill the Siege Tanks. Obviously, Siege Tanks um, can actually take, um, you know, a couple of shots, but really not that many. And since they're very immobile, um, you can sometimes even pick up a Medivac as well. So try and focus on just simply dealing tons and tons of damage as soon as the upgrades finish up and just simply push for the victory. Now as far as transitions go, in this specific case you can see the plus one missile upgrade going down. He's also getting a fourth base up and obviously um, you could be transitioning towards Lurkish, you could be transitioning towards Hydras, even go up to a Hive, start researching melee attack for example, go up to Ultras or even go to Brute Lords. There's tons of different options but I, if I were you I would be focusing on mostly this build order um, at the very beginning and just focus on maximizing this very powerful timing attack and until you maximize Maximize that one. You know, if you lose a couple games here and there because of your execution failing, I mean, you may as well try some different transitions and see which one you prefer the most. And that should be pretty much it as far as this build order goes. I would highly recommend you jump into a custom game for at least a couple of times to practice this before jumping on the ladder. The reason why you want to do that is that because you don't really want to, you know, think about the build order very actively. So you have a much easier time defending the different strategies that the Terran can be throwing at you. So you can actually do this kind of multitasking that you see Solar do right now to defend the multiple drops, to make sure that you're dealing with all the kinds of aggression and that you're actually constantly scouting out your Terran opponents. Other than that, I hope you enjoyed this video. If you haven't already, like down below so I know that you enjoy these type of videos and I will actually be able to keep on creating them. And other than that, I want to thank you all for watching. Have an amazing day. Do not forget to smile. And I'll see you in the next one.